What's the deal, my people? You know what it is, Don Tony Teflon, and I'm back at you, another one. And House of the Dragon has just released a new trailer, but in a twist, they released two teaser trailers, one for the greens and one for the blacks. In this video, I'm going to break down what happens in the green trailers, and I'll be doing videos for all episodes of House of the Dragon, so make sure you subscribe, click that bell, hit that thumbs up, because 500 likes triggers the algorithm that helps spread this across YouTube. Let's get this popping. So George Double R. Martin is famous for making his characters gray, meaning that there's no evil, there's no good, it's just who you want to side with. And that's what they're playing on when they're dealing with this series on HBO, that they want you to pick a side. Are you with the blacks or are you with the greens? The trailer starts off with Allison at the set. She has been religious even when she was a little girl all the way up to adulthood. And we know when people become adults and mortality is a factor dealing with this war, you even become more religious. She talks about how the kingdom was at peace when her husband was alive, but as soon as he passed, that's when everything went to shit. But we have to understand that she truly believes that her husband wanted their son on the Iron Throne. So she thinks by doing her husband's last dying wish and putting Putting their son on the Iron Throne, she's doing what's right. You can see that by the cane the person's holding, she's talking to Loris, that is the guy with the foot fetish. And I'm not going to kink shame anybody who's into feet. Y'all do what you got to do. Stick those toes in your mouth and suck away. We get a long shot of the dragon pit. The dragons are the power in this show. And this is where the dragons rest. So that's truly the house of the dragons. We then see the red keep decked out in Aegon sigil, which is a green background for the high towers. And a golden dragon for his gold dragon, Sunfire, which is supposed to be the most beautiful dragon that ever existed. We see Renera walking into the small council room with the pussy whip knight himself, Kristen Cole. Don't be pussy whip. Whip that pussy. Look. Bang, 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 bang. We then get a picture of Renera in Dragonstone, and we also hear Alicent saying he knew the realm would never accept the queen, talking about. King Viserys, who shouldn't have been king in the first place, but he was named king because the Great Council said that he was a male and his male line takes precedent over the queen who never was, Princess Rhaenys. We see Otto Hightower still handed a king, watching Aegon take the throne. Now, if you're talking about why the Greens feel that Aegon should still on the throne, you have to look at Rhaenyra herself. Otto didn't care if Rhaenyra inherited the throne until she married Daemon. Once she married Daemon, who a lot of lords think will become the next Mago of the Cruel, who was the worst king in Westeros history, he convinced Alicent that her kids would never be safe because they are a male line and a lot of lords will always go to the male line over the female line and Daemon would know this so he would have her kids executed. We've seen this play out in Game of Thrones with Daenerys Targaryen once they found out that Jon Snow was a Targaryen. What kind of person climbs on a fucking dragon? A madman or a king? <laughs> they wanted him on the throne just because he was a man. This is the Red Keep setting up the fence for Rhaenyra's dragons when they try to come and invade and after that we see one of the Cargill twins. Now Eric and Arik. Now one of them is with the blacks and the other one is with the greens and because they're twins the greens come up with a plot to try to use that towards their advantage. This is Damon looking over the blacks army. It could be at Rook's Rest. It could be somewhere else. After that we get a quick clip of Otto Hightower talking to his daughter trying to inform her about the war itself. Queen Rhaenyra looking very queenly while she's holding court. After this, we get a shot of Sunfire. He's the king's dragon, the one that's on the sigil. He's the one who's gold. Again, he's supposed to be the most beautiful dragon that ever lived. And in the books, when he shoots his flames, they come out gold and black. We see somebody getting wet and turning to ash by a dragon. And after this, we see blood and cheese. Blood and cheese is supposed to be House of the Dragon's attempt at a red wedding. Now, I don't know if it's going to be as a emotional for most people as the Red Wedding was because they're not going to care about the people it happens to the way they cared about Rob Stark and Catelyn Stark. Well, people didn't really care about Catelyn. This is Blood and Cheese sneaking into the Red Keep and this is going to happen quick in episode one. So we'll see how it plays out if it is that red wedding moment that they're hoping for, in the books it's called the Sun for a Sun. So that's a hint and it's planned by Damon. 
This is King Aegon's crown that he's wearing while he's in battle because he will be going into battle on Dragonback, his dragon being Sunfire. Not as big as all the other dragons, but still a formidable dragon, and he will be on the front lines during the battle himself. This is Alicent trying to get her son to act like a king and to also take it seriously because a lot of lives have been lost in order for him to sit this throne and he needs to take it more seriously because people are actually dying. After this we see Damon arriving at Harrenhal. When he gets to Harrenhal it's at night and he takes this castle with no one trying to resist at all. We get Aemon one-eyed talking about wanting to fight his uncle Damon, and I will say this, that unlike the Night King and Jon Snow, that this does get paid off at some point. And whether you think it's a good payoff will be up to you, but we will see those two go one-on-one. -on -one. This is a celebration, and if it's a celebration I'm thinking of, there's no way I can mention it without giving away exactly what's happening. So I'm just going to keep that to myself because I truly don't want to spoil this season for you if you haven't read the books. Alicent, who does not look happy to be here whatsoever, she just looks so bitter. And then we go into her father, who has been removed as Hand of the King for Sir Kristen. This is the Blackwoods versus the Brackens. They are Westeros' version of the Hatfields and the McCoys. Those two families just hate each other. They always have. They always will. We also see this. Loras at a small council meeting, he's over here flipping a coin between his fingers. What's important is, what small council meeting is this? Is it later or is it early in the season? That makes a huge difference. We then see Sir Kristen Cole going to behead somebody with a bunch of onlookers there. And then we see the results of blood and cheese. This handmaiding, that's what we'll call her with a bloody garment, definitely from the blood and cheese scenario that took place. After that, we see King Aegon satisfied about what just happened. Vagar, the oldest dragon and strongest dragon of all the dragons. We see Kristen Cole with his hand of the king, necklace on, charging into battle. This is a significant battle he's actually charging into, can't get into that. And then we see the battle of the Carlisle brothers, which is taking place in somebody's bedroom. I would say it's Rhaenyra's bedroom. I told you they were going to try to use the fact that they were twins to their advantage. That's what's going on. We get a quick shot of King's Landing where a lot of the action will take place when this is all said and done. Alicent going to light a candle. Again, Alicent does not want this battle. She does not wish for this battle. She just has no choice but to do it. When we see her in the bathtub, I think she's saying that war is ugly, it's disgusting, and she's trying to wipe it off her skin. Like literally just try to get all that bad vibes, all that bad energy off of her skin. This to me is her Calgon moment, if you understand what I'm saying. The traffic. I can't read the that. The boss. The baby. The dog. That does it. Calgon, take me away. Lose your cares in the luxury of a Calgon death. She just seems fed up, wiped out, and just wants to get away from everything that's going on. And that's why she's laying in the water. That's my take on it. I don't know. You tell me in the comment what you think. We then see Sunfire again flying through the sky. Aegon finally going to take the throne with his boys by his side. In the final shot of Sunfire, he will play a major, major, major role in... In this season, it, the ending is going to be phenomenal. Can't wait to get to the ending. It's going to be a really good season. The trailer was good. It was just a teaser. I truly was expecting a full trailer, but this was a teaser. And they also have another teaser for the black. So you know what that means. I'm going to go through that trailer next. And after I go through it, I'll make my notes. And after I do that, I'll be back to break down that trailer. Also, I will be doing a live stream. Make sure you subscribe because our live streams are calling live streams where you can call in, speak to the Don Tony Teflon, Phil the Issues guy, and the one, the only bridge for. Big Cab will be in the house. The Usual Suspects podcast is back. Now that House of the Dragon is back. And we will be breaking down all these trailers. And we'll even talk to our girls on our sister podcast, Die Wolf City, which is Gray Area and the People. So we're going to definitely 
talk to them and see if we can link up and do what we did last year and have all that fun again make sure you subscribe so you can get all of it let me know what you think and also let me know whose side you're on are you with the blacks you believe that Renera has the right to sit the iron throne and Alicent is nothing more of a usurper or are you with Alicent I think there's an argument to be made for both sides I have my side picked but I won't tell you in this trailer I'll tell you in the next trailer after we get done with both of them and then I'll tell you exactly why in a different video I'm right to pick this person and if you like the way I do this please thumbs up this spread this across the realm and of course subscribe and until next time you know who it is peace and stay sexy